Yeah, I'm sorry, but we don't accept solicit. Ah, my apologies. You seem to be worse for wear. Please, it's freezing out. Come inside. Let me take your coat. The night is unkind to wayward travelers. What gave you the idea of being out at this hour? I saw your transportation down the way. Brave little soul to be driving on unmarked dirt roads up in the mountains in the middle of a storm. <laughs> Though my acquaintances accuse me of interchanging brave and stupid from time to time. <laughs> Oh, how ungallant of me. I am Vincent Vane. Sir Vincent Vane, manager and sole master of this macabre and magnificent manor. Hmm? If you are wondering why I am answering the door and not my servants, I pay them to work during the day, and I so value my evening privacy. You look like a drenched cat. Follow. Vane Manor has been the pride of our family for many generations. My sister used to live here, but she got bored and moved to the city. Far be it from me to leave this hallowed place alone. I'm sure if these walls could talk, they'd have quite the stories to tell you. I'm sure the elegant statues of lovely ladies and expensive paintings of various blue bats might have been obvious of our pedigree, but by the way you're shivering, you're probably having a hard time concentrating. Mind the mansion. Even on quiet nights it can be a bit chilly. Ah, much better. More intimate space, inviting fireplace, leather chairs. They might be older than I am, but they are polished to a mirror shine. Please, sit. As standoffish as I am, far be it from me to be inhospitable when your guest arrives. Hmm? Oh, you look pale. You're not worried that you've been invited in by a vampire bat, are you? I wouldn't ruminate on the idea. In time, I'll placate your concerns. Let me fetch you some tea. We might be up in the mountains, but what kind of savage denies himself of modern conveniences? The road services won't be answering calls at this time of night. But there are many vacant rooms here. You are permitted a night's stay until you can call and have your car towed. Until then, you are officially my guest. Here, compliments of the house. Peppermint chai tea. A favorite of mine. Hmm. Do you like storms? Current circumstances notwithstanding, of course. Despite the tempest that rages outside, there is a serene quality to them when muffled behind secure, sturdy walls. The way it batters against the windows with tiny needle pricks of water. The gentle rumble of the elements too far to count. They say you could tell how far away lightning is just by counting between the flash and the thunder. Flash. One, two, three, four. <laughs> four miles away. Very far from here. Far from my fireplace. From my clock. That's all very close. There is a metronomic quality to this room, isn't there? crackling fire. It is a room designed to help lull the senses and wreathe them in warmth, though a typical side effect is the mind becoming uncertain of minor details. Like the plush blanket I gave you when you entered the room. 
Oh, but you've barely touched your tea. Drink. Drink up. Drink, please. There we go. Drink, please. Ah, there we go. The slight tinge of honey and mint is a wonderful way to loosen the sinuses on a cold night like this. Now, I imagine that you might expect me to ask you what you are doing up here so late at night. But I don't care. I never do. Instead, I prefer to play a little game with my guests. It's simply called Stay Awake. You start our game by looking at me in the proper light. Glance over my blue fur, my large ears, almost like satellite dishes. No need to feel insecure about the gawking. I'm quite proud of my appearance. It takes quite a bit of grooming to keep my light blue hair distinct from the electric blue of my fur. But all you're seeing right now is the red of my eyes. Can't pull away, can you? This warm little corner of my manor is designed for this. A fireplace, a clock, even the tea. All accumulating like layers of grease, forming a thinning film on your thoughts. So you can sink into the pit of my stare. No talking while we play. I have no real pupils in this glorious red glow. But please, feel free to look deeper. See if you can find them. No one ever does. My red eyes are like twin embers, much more stable than the dancing fire, and even glow from iris to center. I can even intensify and ease. By now, you are probably feeling the world turn into a tunnel, narrow. Yet unfocused, eyes drooping already. It's almost cute. It makes me wonder if I rotated my pointed bat snout clockwise. You'd follow suit. There we go. You have an exquisite expression on your face. There's a state of consciousness I simply adore that is nestled between confusion and total bliss. Let me see that transition, little guest. I want to see that gradual fade where your mind gives out and drains all of your memory and identity like quicksilver. Show it to me. Show. Show. <laughs> Exquisite. That look never gets old. I can't get enough of it. Mm. Coming to my home at night is a serious mistake. Quite the mistake indeed. Ah, you're trying to resist a little. Good. Would have been boring otherwise. Mm. I, I want, want to hear you mutter and whine and drool nonsense. I want to hear you coo helplessly as I cherry-pick every little thought you try to have. Licking it clean. So very clean. Until you're a polished, faceless little drone. It's what I want. In my manner. What I want is all that matters. Sing. You're mine now. You don't even remember the world outside this warm fireplace and red glow. You're just passively listening to all I have to say. Just the way I like my guests. Pliant and pacified. Head up, please. Let's get a good look at you. You have excellent bone structure. 
I love your ears in particular. Mm, what to do with you? See, I'm a bit of an art collector by trade. But I do more than provide patronage to budding baldongs and potential Picassos. A wise man once said, a body is his temple, and what greater cathedral is worth celebrating? Immortalized in avant-garde expression. That's right. I collect artists, models, and art alike. Oh, but you're drooling. You barely even know what I'm talking about. No, you don't. <laughs> That's fine. Art does not need to think. The thinking is done by those that appreciate it. Stand, if you please. We'll get you out of these wet clothes and set you up with a nice pedestal. I can worry about the theming later. I think for now we'll work on your brand new sparkling personality. <laughs> it's all right. Fall into my lovely gaze. So very deep that every dim iota of your conscious self forgets it even existed in the first place. Let's make a nice, clean polished vessel for me to fill to the brim with a new voice, new demeanor, new you. Oh, don't look so dumbfounded. After all, you didn't think a visit to my manor would be free, did you? But you don't care anymore. You're just lost in the glow. Totally lost. And you have all night to open up to me. By the time I'm done, no one will recognize you, little guest. <laughs>